The sun dazzles us with a beautiful eruption in the east, a really cool flare in the west, and a big corona hole in the middle. Those stories and more in the news this week. The sun may be on its way to solar minimum, but it's sure not acting like it. Back on the 7th, we had this gorgeous filament eruption that launched a big solar storm east of Earth, so it's not Earthward directed. But no worries, we are actually in the middle of a solar storm right now due to this massive corona hole that's sending Earth some fast wind. Now, this isn't a huge solar storm. It's only been giving us a little bit of aurora, but it's still enough to create some gorgeous pictures. And then we're not done. Just on the 10th, we got this beautiful flare, right, that's occulted. It's on the west limb. This is from region 2615 as kind of a parting shot to say goodbye. I'm heading to the backside. Switching to our M flare threat meter, you can see back in late November, region 2615 was actually an M flare player. It was popping off a few M class flares here and there, making the amateur radio bands have some radio blackouts, causing a few issues for GPS users. But then as kind of the, this region transited the Earth strike zone, it quieted down and quieted down. Only had a few C class flares and then pretty much nothing until it rotated to the west limb. And just on December 10th, pow, it pops this other C class flare, which might even have been an M class flare and it launched a solar storm. Now we're not going to see that thing. That's off way to the west of us, but it is kind of a parting kiss goodbye as region 2615 rotates around the disk. Switching to our solar storm conditions, you can see back in early December, things were pretty quiet, and it's actually been quiet for quite some time. But then this big coronal hole rotated in through the Earth strike zone, and it's starting around the 8th, that first finger-like projection rotated right through that strike zone and gave us some decent fast wind, which brought up the aurora activity. Then things quieted down for just a moment, and then a bigger finger rotated right through the strike zone once again, because it's kind of a weird-shaped hole, but it's managed to give us even more activity, so we actually popped up to storm levels and got a little bit of aurora all around the world. Then things have dropped back down since then and we're beginning to see things wane. So you uh, amateur radio operators, all that disturbance that you've been seeing on the bands over the past few days, that's going to start quieting down and quieting down. And you aurora photographers, well, this may be it for a little while. And although this solar storm is not the strongest that we've had, it did give us some decent aurora over the past few days, like this gorgeous shot from Estonia. And in Sweden, we also had gorgeous shots in Norway and in Finland, also Scotland. Apparently, it was all over Scotland. We also saw it in the Isle of Lewis, in Iceland, and over the pond, we saw it all over Canada. Here's some shots from Saskatchewan and Alberta, and we also saw it in Alaska. So what else does the sun have in store for us this week? Well, this is Stereo A. It's our backside monitor. You can see here's Earth, here's the sun, and here's Stereo A staring at the sun from behind. And you can see there's a huge coronal hole on the backside. That's the coronal hole that gave us some fast wind back at the end of November. Now that coronal hole is now rotating to the west limb on the backside, which means it'll be back in Earth strike zone in about two weeks. But you could also see it's got this really cool active region that's in the middle, that bright spot right there. And that thing has been firing off solar storms like mad. So that whole region's pretty unstable. So you never know, and maybe in a couple weeks, not only will we get some fast wind and a solar storm from that, but we also might get some other solar storms fired off from this active region as well. Switching to your solar storm conditions and aurora possibilities over the coming week, we are still in that high speed stream, but that's going to be waning here in the next few days. You can see NOAA is expecting us to have active conditions at, at high latitudes with about 15 to 20 percent chance of a minor storm. But again, this is going to be kind of calming down throughout the week. At mid latitudes, we're really only expecting about unsettled conditions with about a 10 to 20 percent chance of maybe active conditions. So your aurora photographers, you're probably going to have to start packing it in, especially if you're mid-latitudes and wait it out for maybe about the next 10 days to maybe even two weeks before we get a chance for some other storming. Now you uh, ham radio operators, you should be rejoicing because the conditions will start improving right about now and they continue to look good throughout the rest of the week. Switching to our solar flare and particle radiation storm outlook over the coming week, as far as flares are concerned, everything is in the green. The disk is spotless which for you GPS operators is really good news. You guys are in the clear and it's going to continue to be like that into the foreseeable future. Now, as far as you amateur radio operators are concerned, it's a different story. Why? 
the disk is spotless, which means you barely have enough solar flux to even keep radio propagation going in the upper atmosphere. So you can see we're kind of in the yellow right here. We're sitting really at marginal levels at 70-ish, and that's barely enough that you need. So even though the solar storm will move out, you will still continue to have sporadic problems simply because there's just not enough charged environment to keep you guys going. So the space weather this week has actually been pretty active, but we are beginning to calm down and calm down. We had that huge coronal hole that's been transiting the Earth strike zone over the past couple days, and that has given us some gorgeous aurora, but things are beginning to kind of wane as that ro uh, region rotates off of the west limb. Now outside of that, it's been pretty spotless because region 2615 is now on the backside. So we really have very little solar flux, and you amateur radio operators, well, you just kind of have to struggle here for the next five days or so until the region from the backside comes onto the east limb and that should bring us a little bit more solar flux to get propagation going again and with it will also be another coronal hole and that should be back in the earth strike zone in about 12 days or so so you aurora photographers you also have to kind of just wait out this quiet spell until we get another chance for some solar storming. I'm Tamitha Scove thank you for watching.